Let's get right into it. To create a new purchase order in the SAP S4HANA system using Fiori, we will navigate to the application called Manage Purchase Orders. Select this application over here. And by the way, if you are not sure whether you are in the right application, you can check it via this button over here. Click on About. And here you can see I'm referring to the application called F0842A. As always, you can also copy this number and insert it into the Fiori Reference Apps Library to get even more information. I will leave you a link in the description of this video. So far so good. Over here you can see the start screen. So here we could search for different purchase orders by various criteria, such as our supplier, purchase order itself, company code, on the material. And then you can see over here all the purchase orders according to our filters. We can for sure click on such a purchase order and then either inspect it via this button, copy the purchase order, or for certain purchase orders we could also withdraw them from approval or delete them if they are still in editing status. So far so good, we will now create a new purchase order from scratch. Therefore we click on create and here you can see different tabs. We will go through them from left to right. First of all you can see here the general information. Here we must insert a purchasing group. Such a purchasing group is nothing else than an organizational unit that is responsible for the procurement activities within a company. So it would represent a group of buyers or a specific buyer who is responsible for certain procurement tasks. I will just choose group 001. Next off we need to fill the purchasing organization. A purchasing organization is the key organizational unit within our materials management module in SAP that is responsible for the procurement activities and also procurement strategies within our company. Let me just insert one. I will take 1010 in this example and you can see the company code was filled accordingly as it was derived from the purchasing organization. You may ask yourself what is the difference between a purchasing group and a purchasing organization. So the purchasing organization operates at a let's say strategic broader level encompassing entire regions, plans or company codes. And the purchasing group operates at a more tactical more focused level dealing with specific categories or types of purchases. So meaning that while the purchasing organization can cover multiple plans, regions or company codes, the purchasing group will focus on for instance specific materials, services or vendors. Where for instance the purchasing organization 1010 could be responsible for all procurement activities in North America and the purchasing group 001 would be responsible for the procurement of let's say raw materials within North America. I hope this makes it clear. Next off you can see here the purchasing document type. By the way I have another video explaining you all the customizing of this purchasing document type. I will leave a link in the description of this one. This purchasing document type will decide about the number that is pulled by the system, also about the fields that we can type information in within the screen over here and so on. Let's insert a currency and then we must insert a supplier. And that's it. Now we come to the items section. Over here we must provide now our purchase order line items. Either we can add them from a document or we can click on create. Let's now click on create. You can see more information is being displayed. We must insert our material and then let's actually click on this arrow over here. Now you can see we can insert lots of information. Let's say the order quantity and also the net price. You can see we can include here an item category as well. This item category will control various aspects of our procurement process. So it will determine the behavior of the purchase order item, whether it involves, for instance, a consignment process, subcontracting third party and so on. Blank in this instance, so standard, is the item category for a typical purchase order where materials are procured and added to our inventory. Consignment is used when we procure goods that remain the property of our vendor until they are used or sold. So the payment is made only when the goods are taken from the consignment stock. I have a separate video about that. I will leave a link in the description of this video. Subcontracting would mean that we send some materials to our vendor for processing or assembly into a finished product and then the vendor provides the finished product back to us. I also explained this in another video. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. Third party would be when the procurement is for third party orders. So when the goods are shipped directly from the vendor to the customer without entering our inventory. This is also called dropshipping. Other item categories are not possible with this new app. However, they are possible with the old app ME21N 
that I explained in another video. As always, I will leave the link in the description of this one. Then you can see the account assignment category. Here we have various account assignment categories. This account assignment category would specify the type of account assignment and also determine how the costs associated with the procurement are allocated within the company's financial controlling. So it could be, for instance, an asset, also a cost center, an order, and so on. Now we have here the delivery address. This is copied from the supplier master. Let's go down a bit to process control. Here you can see that for this material, we could set the goods receipt based invoice verification, meaning that during the entering of an invoice, Invoice, this invoice will be matched against the goods received and not against the purchase order. Then we can select here invoice received, meaning that an invoice received is expected for this purchase order. We could set final invoice so that no more invoices are pending for this purchase order. And also we can set delivery complete so that no more goods receipts are pending for this purchase order. For now this is fine. You can see we have a delivery details. We could set for instance that we tolerate an over delivery or an under delivery of a certain amount or even an unlimited over delivery. We could include a storage location if we know the precise destination of our product to be purchased and also we can include shipping instructions if necessary. Then we can include our INCO terms. So those INCO terms over here are standardized terms used globally in international trade contracts to define our responsibilities and also obligations of buyers and sellers regarding the delivery of the goods. Then we have a source of supply. We could select info record update. You know that the purchasing info record is used to retrieve default values such as our prices, our terms of delivery and payment terms, tax codes and so on. I made a separate video about the purchasing info records. As always, it's linked in the description of this one. So if we select this indicator and the system found an info record for this purchase order item, then the system would allow us to update this record if we change, for instance, pricing conditions, delivery terms and so on directly here in the purchase order. So we need that once we save the purchase order with the new values, the purchasing info record for our supplier will be updated automatically. We can even include a purchasing contract or a specific contract item if necessary and a tax code. Let's say V0 for now. Then you can see here the pricing conditions. We can include more conditions if necessary. We have scheduling lines. This we will leave blank right now as we will not work with scheduling lines for this purchase order. We have a section for the product compliance and also a supplier confirmation control. So for instance, that certain confirmations are pending before we can proceed with the goods received. Okay, last but not least, you can see a section 40 account assignment, but this is only relevant if we select the item category other than standard. Last but not least, we have here certain notes that we can include and also we can drag and drop certain attachments. For now, this is fine. Let's click on apply. Last but not least, you can see a section called approval details. So if this purchase order is subject to an approval process, you can see here the steps. Okay, now we could either discard the draft or we can save the order via order. Let's click on this one. And you can see the purchase order has been created successfully. Here you can see all the details. You can edit the purchase order, copy it, or now also withdraw it from approval. Yeah, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.